Today we'll be learning 5 pro motion graphics techniques to expand your skill set and we'll be using them to create this really cool orbital scene. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is create the background and paths that our shapes are going to be rotating across. First, go to Layer, New, Solid, click OK, we'll rename this solid to Background, then go up to Effect, Generate, Gradient Ramp. We'll set the first color of this gradient ramp to be an extremely dark gray and the second color to be purely black. Now set the start of ramp to be at the center of the composition, then set the end of ramp to be underneath of the start, off of the composition like this, and set the ramp shape to be a radial ramp. Next we'll make our first set of rings, so select the ellipse tool, make sure fill is set to none, stroke is set to solid color, and set the stroke width to 0.5. Hold shift and control, then click and drag from the center of the composition to make a perfect circle that's around this size, then we'll rename this layer to Ring 1. Open the Ring 1 layer, then select Add, Repeater, open Repeater 1, set the copies to 40, open Transform Repeater, set the position to be 0, 0, increase the scale to 103%, and bring the end opacity all the way down to 0. Now we have our first set of rings, and to make our next set, just duplicate Ring 1, open Ring 2, Contents, Repeater 1, set the copies back to 3, open Transform Repeater, set the scale to 155, bring the end opacity back to 100%, and then increase the stroke width of the ring to 3. Lastly, we'll create one more ring, so duplicate Ring 2, open Ring 3, Contents, Delete Repeater 1, scale down Ring 3 to 70%, and increase the stroke width of the ring to 70. Now we have our background and ring set up that we'll be animating our shapes across. Next, we'll animate some shapes around the rings that we just made and create a simple upwards counter. Start by selecting the Ellipse tool, set Fill to Solid Color, Stroke to None, then go to the first ring here, hold Shift and Control, then create a small circle right on top of the ring like this, then we'll rename the layer to Planets 1. We want to create the circle right on top of the ring because new shape layers put their anchor point at the center of the composition. Now when we rotate this shape layer, it will rotate in a circle along the rings like this. To add more planets to this ring, open Planets 1, Contents, duplicate Ellipse 1, then move it somewhere else along the same ring like this. I'll do this one more time, duplicating Ellipse 2 and putting it in another spot on the ring so that we have three circles on the ring as part of one single shape layer like this. To add a rotation animation, highlight Planets 1, press R for rotation, alt click the stopwatch for rotation and type in time asterisk 40. Our first set of planets is done and to create our next set, just duplicate Planets 1 Increase the scale of planets 2 until they land on the next bold ring, then open up the layer and move each of the ellipses to new spots on this ring. We also need to go into the rotation animation and increase the speed of our time animation to 60 to compensate for the fact that it's rotating on a larger ring. We'll duplicate planets 3 now, increase its size so that it's on the third bold ring, then move the circles around again so that they're in even more different places. Open the rotation animation again and we'll increase the speed of this one to 80 for the largest ring. Now highlight planets too and we're going to change the colors of the circles to a nice light red to add just a little bit of color to the whole composition. Lastly we'll make our upwards counter, so select the text tool, we'll click the composition and type out the number 0, then align it at the center of the composition like this. Now go up to Effect, Expression Controls, Slider Control, open the text layer, Text, Alt click the stopwatch for source text, then drag the pick whip onto the slider control that we just added. Now when we increase the slider, the number of the text layer will increase with it, but an issue we have is if we use keyframes to animate this number, it's going to go through all of the decimals between the numbers and we don't want that. To fix this, go to the expression we just made, put parentheses around the entire expression, then type MATH with a capital M dot ROUND in front of the parentheses. 
Now when we animate our number, it will round to the nearest whole number, eliminating the decimals. Now we have our shapes animated and our upwards counter ready to go for our composition. Before we move on, as you may know, creating motion graphics can be incredibly time consuming. That's why we've made thousands of templates to help you save time and produce professional work with our Motion Duck extension. For example, you can easily preview templates from one of our packs and just click the apply button. Then you can quickly change the template parameters and you're done. So if you're looking to gain an edge within your work, check out every template we have for After Effects and Premiere Pro with the links below. To finish off our composition, we'll add a simple transition, some camera movements, and a couple of post-processing effects. For the transition, we'll create a giant ellipse shape that covers the entire screen like this, make sure it's centered, change its mode to Stencil Alpha, then we'll rename the layer to Transition. Now press S for scale on the transition, set a keyframe, set the scale to 0%, move forward a bit on the timeline, set the scale to 100%, Highlight the keyframes, press F9 to make them easy ease, then we'll smooth out the animation in the graph editor. Now we have this circular reveal transition. Next, we want to animate the scale of the rest of the composition, so go to Layer, New, Null Object, put the null underneath of the transition on the layer list, then parent all of the layers underneath of it except for the background to the null, like this. Open the scale animation of the transition we just made, Highlight the keyframes, press Ctrl C to copy them, then highlight the null object, move a few frames down the timeline, then press Ctrl V to paste that same scale animation onto the null object. Now all of the shapes will animate in along with the reveal transition like this. Next we'll add some camera movements, so highlight every layer except the transition and the background, enable them as 3D layers, then go to Layer, New, Camera, and click OK. Move the camera to around 2 seconds on the timeline, select the Orbit Around Scene tool, then rotate the scene to put it at a nice angle that's something like this. Open the camera layer, transform, set a keyframe for point of interest and position, select the Pan Under Cursor tool, move the camera position a bit, move forward on the timeline, then move the camera position a bit more to create this panning animation. Highlight the camera layer, press Ctrl Shift D to split this layer into two, open camera two, delete all of the keyframes and then create new ones like this. Select the orbit around scene tool, change the angle of the second camera to something new, select the pan under cursor tool, move the camera, move forward a bit on the timeline and move the camera one more time to make another panning animation. Lastly, we'll add some post-processing effects, so go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, then go to Effect, Noise and Grain, Noise, and Effect, Stylize, Glow. Set the amount of noise to 12%, uncheck Use Color Noise, set the Glow Threshold to 100%, Glow Radius to 125, Glow Intensity to 0.5, and Alt-click the stopwatch for Glow Radius. Type in Wiggle, parentheses, 0.5 comma 40 into the expression control so that the glow will flicker a little bit. And you're done! An awesome and professional orbital scene made using 5 pro motion graphic techniques in After Effects. Be sure to like this video, download our free motion graphics pack available in the description, and remember, always be creating.